Hey there, Wolfpack fans. Today, we're going to be talking NC State baseball as Pac-9 absolutely whooped um, Eastern Carolina. And we'll talk about how this big win is slightly dampered by a big loss, but we'll get to that a little later on this episode of Locked on Wolfpack. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, in this game today, we saw what we are, are typically accustomed to seeing uh, from this NC State team in that we were extremely hot as far as our bats go. We did things very well, and we were hard to stop the entire game, uh, not just talking about the grand slam there at the end by Josh Hood. This was a, a game in which, uh, from top to bottom, we hit the ball fairly well. And with that being said, that's always going to put us in a better position to win. But let's be honest, our bats have not been the problem throughout the season. I, like, I can't remember a series where I looked at our offense and I was just like, oh, my God, we can't generate anything. We can't get anything going. Uh, I want to say maybe maybe Notre Dame might have been it, maybe. But that's about it. That is that is about it. Like, that's – or you know what? It might have been uh, Florida – either way, the fact of the matter remains, this team has not struggled much as far as our bats go. That hasn't been – what has plagued us, what has uh, just given us fits more and more during this um, during this season. So when we talk about what has been a problem, when we talk about uh, what has created the the tension that we've seen so far or the losses that we've seen so far, because the pack improved to, I want to say it is 26 and uh, 26 and let me make sure I got this right. 26 and 13 on the season, still 11 and on in conference, but Again, when we're doing these things uh, or how we got here was not from our offense not percolating. Yes, we talk ad nauseum about Tommy White and how he's hit homers. Yes, we talk about Geno Groover and the amazing hit streak that he had going. We can talk about uh, Josh Hood and the things that he's done, uh, Devontae Brown or Deontay Brown and, and the things that he's done to play. There have been a lot of good things to talk about as far as our offense goes. The problem has been getting folks out, and we didn't have a problem with that this game. So, you know, you've got to tip your hat to our uh, pitching staff. And aside from from two small errors, it's you know it's it's been pretty good in that area. And now I just want to talk about something real quick because a lot of ECU fans were doing a lot of talking. They were doing a lot of talking about oh the NC State is scared they don't want to play us you know they play all these other teams around the state they'll play Davidson they'll play UNCG they won't play us they're so scared to play us hmm you know my mother always used to tell me careful what you wish for because you just might get it pirates pirate nation you wished for it you got it well what did that what did Brian's book uh on on Family Guy, say the self help one that that went like triple platinum or whatever. I know books don't go platinum. I know it was a New York Times bestseller, but you get the point. It was what wish it, love it, dream it. Yeah, they they did it. They did it. You dreamed yourself right into a twelve to three whooping. That, my friends, that my friends is messing around and finding out the gap between messing around and finding out narrowed, narrowed a lot, didn't it? Maybe, maybe, and is. This is just my advice. I've been wrong before. I'm sure I'll be wrong again in life. But my advice would be to not let your mouth or your fans write checks that you're behind can't cash. But, you know, that's not even the ECU players' fault. You know what I mean? They, they had nothing to do with that. That's, that's not their business. Uh, but this is good momentum to take into um, a series against a, a Radford team that, let's just be honest, they're, they're not a, a super amazing powerhouse of an unbeatable team but with that being said uh, we still need to do what we need to do like there has been times this season where we have lost the teams that you know you you kind of were left scratching your head by so um if we're going to pull out this series then that's that's we we need to do what we need to do 
as far as um, as far as fielding, as far as pitching. And again, this is not a, this is a 13 and 27 uh, Radford team that has struggled mightily all season long. But the reality is um, it's never a good idea to rely solely on one part of your game. It's never a great idea to say we can guarantee our bats will be hot and it'll be the same situation that it was at Boston College where we can commit a ton of errors and we'll be okay because our guys are hidden. That's not a great idea. It just isn't. And that's that is why I'm saying that uh in order to in order to accomplish what we want to accomplish, in order to get done what we want to get done uh on the season, a lot like what Alex Sawyer was saying, some of those errors have to get cleaned up. Because even if we're talking about today's game, um, Gino Gruber and uh, Gino Gruber and, and the pitcher who was credited with the win, Baker Nelson, uh, both came away with errors today. And so, you know, there's at the end of the day, you don't want to get to uh, a point late in the season where you are stuck saying to yourself, man, we should have cleaned that up earlier. You don't want to get to a point in the season where you're seeing the same deleterious results because you did not fix anything. We all know the definition of insanity is doing the same things repeatedly and expecting a different result. Something's got to change. Something's got to change as far as what we're doing, um, what we're doing in terms of fielding and, and this credit to Elliot David. He's tried multiple lineups. He's tried shifting guys around to see uh, where everybody would fit best and, and where, folks will have the best effect. But the reality is, again, we can have these errors against um, ECU. We can't against Notre Dame. We can't against the Louisville. We can't uh, we, we can't against quality teams of Florida State. You, you just can't, okay? Because if you do, you're, you're cruising for a bruising. You're, you're literally asking uh, to get whooped on it. Going forward this season, we have, I want to say, all in – yep, all of our uh, all of our remaining all of our remaining series this season are in state uh, as far as our conference series go. So at this point in time, this would be a great time. This would be a great time to let this win kind of turn into some momentum and get some positive things done uh, on the back end there. Because at the end of the day, when I talk about when I talk about NC State's ability to uh, get things done and, and go into the tournament hot and just get better and better and better. It has to start somewhere. If we're talking about cleaning up the areas, if we're talking about our pitching, our pitching staff um, competing at a higher level, which took a little bit of a hit tonight. And, and, and we're going to talk about that later. But if we're talking about those things, they have to start somewhere. Why not let this be the game? Why not let this be the moment that you say, you know what? Yes, we had a couple areas, but our pitching staff was great. Let's keep that rolling. Yes, this is not the same quality of bats we'll be seeing for the rest of the year, especially in the tournament, but let's keep it rolling. Because at the end of the day, that's the goal. That's the goal. It doesn't matter uh, when you get it rolling, when you get hot, when you figure it out, just that you figured it out. So we trust a a Elliot Avid to circle the wagon, or at least I trust him. I trust him. So we'll see what happens. Again, this is this is a situation where I'm hoping that we get it figured out. I'm hoping that we, we find a way – uh, to do some positive things because at the end of the day, this is a really, really good team. This is a really fun team to watch. And hopefully we can go from being fun and exciting and high scoring to being meaningfully good, to being uh, purposeful in our fielding, to being a, a, a pitching staff that does a lot of things great. Hopefully that'll be the case because eliminating the errors is where we're going to build a winner in this team. And speaking of building, I've got to talk to you all about Built Bar. These amazing tasting protein bars are one of the best things that you're going to give to yourself. And let me tell you why. Not only are they absolutely delicious, but they're also nutritious and good for you. Let me help you out with this one here, okay? These bars, if you go to built.com and look at the macros on most of the bars, you'll see that they contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs and 17 grams of protein. Now you compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories and 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs. You're coming out a winner here. It is very clear to see 
And when I tell you those macros, you would not believe that these things are covered in 100% real chocolate, but they are. And yes, that includes the puffs. So make sure that you go to build.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Also, let me talk to you all about Athletic Greens. The, these things are absolutely delicious. I am telling you, Athletic Greens will help you get better gut health, more energy, and optimize immune system in no time. If you hated taking pills and supplements, um, this, this just doesn't, this is the thing for you, okay? Trust me, it is lifestyle friendly whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy friendly, or gluten free, doesn't matter. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. And um, these things cost less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Trust me, getting yourself one of these can't go, you can't go wrong. And don't take my word for it. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. So to make it easy, uh, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is vis visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So um, we've also got to talk about, like I said, the, the big loss on the team. Uh, Sam Heifel is, uh, is out for the year. And, you know, while Sam Heifel wasn't, like, playing absolutely lights out ball this year, the fact of the matter is simple. He's still a, a very quality pitcher. And like I've already talked about, the problem has not been uh, NC State's offense. The problem has not been putting runs up on the board. That hasn't been this team's problem in any type of meaningful way. So uh, losing a pitcher like Heifel is is that's always going to be a tough time. I mean he he's just a guy who uh, did so many things the right way and came up absolutely monumentous, huge is an understatement. Came up big is an understatement. He was he threw a one hitter against Vanderbilt and then the next day came back and got, I want to say it was uh, three hits off a of rocker or two hits off rocker, three hits in total, two hits off rocker uh, the next day. You know what I mean? Like he, he got a key to the city in Apex, which is his hometown. My heart really goes out to the man. It's, it's, oh, that's tough. This is just such a tough thing. Not, not only for the Wolfpack, but for him personally. Um, but I'll tell you what, if, if his performance in the world, uh, in the baseball or in the College World Series is any indication of who this young man is and, and the type of character he has, he'll bounce back from this. You know what I mean? He'll he'll be okay and he'll find a way. Uh, but again, this is this is tough for a a bullpen that was already having uh, some problems to begin with. You know what I mean? It's, losing high fellas isn't 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 ideal at all. And and let's if we're going by the numbers here, right? And we're talking about what we've done against some of the better teams in the conference who are also better teams in the nation. I mean, uh, you look at the Notre Dame series, we allowed nine and a half runs per game. You look at Florida state uh, over seven runs per game. Georgia tech was the only series against a ranked opponent where we allowed less than five runs per game. Other than that, you got Virginia tech, which was 10.67 runs per game and Louisville, which was 10 and a half runs per game. Like or 10.3 runs per game. I'm sorry. So you're looking at a, a, a situation where losing high fill, losing high fill hurts a lot. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is this is a situation where you've still got to figure it out. You've still got to figure out a way to bounce back and, and come back from this um a little better than what we were before. And I want to talk, going from baseball now, I want to talk about something 
uh, that I did not, I forgot to mention in the, uh, in the intro here, but um, the, the pack pros, as far as women's basketball goes from all reports that I've seen, they've been doing well. Um, Alyssa Kunane and Alyssa Kunane and um, Raina Perez up in Seattle, as well as Kayla Jones in Minnesota. Um, the those those players have been uh, doing well by all reports, and I'm still just so excited uh, for the NFL draft. I'm so excited to see where our guys go and and where uh, we'll be looking at some of these players happen to land. And, and I'll tell you this, this is going to be, I think these next couple of years for NC state are going to be absolutely massive in terms of uh, players that we have drafted and the impact that they have in the NFL. I honestly and truly do. Uh, and I say that because we're, when we're looking at what coach Doran has done in the past uh, with having first rounders and Bradley Chubb and, and Garrett Bradbury and all that, I'm seeing this as a continuous pattern, as a continuous pattern of players that they just find ways uh, to not only make plays, but to exceed expectations for them by anybody's standard. And that is how you build a really solid program. That is how you build a really winning program. But here's the only caveat to that, okay? You never want to end up being, and this is no disrespect to this team, but you kind of never want to end up being like, um, let's say, in Iowa, who every year they have a lot of really, really good players. They put out a good amount. Their player development is absolutely excellent. But for whatever reason, they just can't seem to get out of their own way. They can't seem uh, to win a, a Big Ten championship. And here's the thing. This NC State team this year, has been ranked all over the place uh, from from barely in the top 25 to as high as I've seen, uh, like five, six, four, whatever the case may be. Here's the thing. I, I'm, I've already talked about this before, but I need to say it again. I am leery of skipping a step. No pun intended. I am leery in skipping a step from going to being the hunter to the hunted without ever winning a championship. That's a dangerous territory to be in because the hunted, uh, the thing that makes the hunted fall off most of the time is a sense of a sense of we have arrived. But the possibility of having a feeling of we have arrived without ever winning an ACC championship is terrifying. That is just, you know, not really something you want to see there. So this this NC State football team, uh, I think going forward, we've got multiple guys who who will be looked at um, very closely. And like I said, if this team, if this team goes on to win the ACC championship, I am betting dollars to donuts. I am betting whatever you want to bet, whatever unit of currency you want me to bet up against um, up against a, a, a few donuts from uh, what's that place? Is it Ducks? Is it Ducks Donuts? They, their donuts are delicious. I want to say it's Duck. I could be wrong, but it, it's not Krispy Kreme. Their, their stuff is a little too generic for me. No offense, but um, yeah, I'm willing to bet you whatever there that Devin's going to be a, a first rounder as well. Uh, and and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Devin Carter is another one. I'm I'm sorry to keep beating the door about Devin Carter and his draft potential. But if he has a big year, he's a big body receiver who can run really fast, who can high point the ball well, who can break some tackles after the catch. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. While he will have some issues of surrounding drops, teams are much less averse to drops than we think they are. I'll tell you that much. That is something that I know for sure. So with that being said, a big body, speedy wide receiver, who knows? Who knows? Thayer Thomas is much in the same way. Only The only difference between the two is Thayer Thomas is somewhat of a known commodity. Like, you know what you're getting out of him, what he's good at, what he's not, all that good stuff. But I believe that he's being underrated for some reason. That doesn't really make sense to me. Um, and I don't want to use words like sneak athletic. No, he's just athletic. He's a really good athlete. 
Um, he doesn't have like burning. If he's even, he's leaving speed, but he's a good athlete. He has really good hands. He he's always open, really good route runner. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's a guy that there are there are a lot of guys. There are a lot of guys on these teams. I'll tell you what, there are so many guys on this team that if they have a good season next year, who knows what we're talking in terms of, of draft stock, right? And I ta- had Ryan Roberts on, and we talked about um, we we talked about Peyton Wilson and what his stock was before the injury. But I'm trying to get him back on again soon, so we can talk about what his stock is now uh, after the injury. But I, I I think that he's still a guy that while he won't be looked at in the first or second round, probably he's a heck of a value if he stays healthy for a couple years in the third, maybe fourth. Uh, um, and you look at. You look at uh, Isaiah Moore, and you've got a similar situation there. Uh, Drake Thomas, uh, I'm sorry, not not Drake Thomas. Yes, Drake Thomas, not there. Drake Thomas is another guy who could be a special teams demon at absolute least for you uh, in the league. So you know these are these are guys who there. I'll just say this: there is a lot of optimism to be had in Raleigh surrounding these guys, and with great reason, and with great reason. So. We'll see how this goes, but I'm betting that the pack sees more success um, come draft day. And speaking of betting, if you're a better, go to betonline.net. It is your number one source for all your sports betting stats and info. Find all the latest sports development, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the uh, Major League Baseball season at Bet Online. Head to the website today to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So we're about to land this thing, but in 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 closing this thing out, big win over ECU. You know that there, there was a lot of talk going on about uh, folks ducking, who was ducking who, and all that, and, and ECU ducked themselves right into uh, a Josh Hood grand slam and a twelve three loss. Congratulations with that. Um, you know our our hearts go out to Sam Highfield again. You you just really hate to see um, uh, this young man season in so abruptly so so short and it's it's really it's not an ideal situation for anybody and again the pack pros that are uh, currently playing as well as the pack pros that are going to be uh going to the league here pretty soon it's going to be great to follow them and hear about what they've got going on pretty soon here and again i'm, I'm trying my hardest to get you all a draft expert before the draft so we will see what we can get done Thank you all so very much for coming out. Wolfpack Nation, y'all make this show what it is. Peace and love, y'all. And as always, go Pack. You are Locked On Wolfpack. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. 